Regan, Scone, okay. you guys are one of my favorite subsets of the cosplay community. You are the family that cosplays together. Yeah. Yes? <laughs> yes. All right, so tell me about these amazing costumes. Clearly you've been doing this for a long time and I want to get into that, but let's start with the costumes. Um, so my costume is an original design that I did as a homage to sewing, because I that's my primary focus. <laughs> so I have like little needles and beads. And this is this is all hand done? It's all, yeah, it was oh all hand applied. God. And then this was white and I painted it so that it would match. It's so, I mean, it looks just like you had a blast just I did. It conceiving was so it fun. and putting it, it together. It was so relaxing because when you hand sew, you can sit on the couch and put on Netflix and you're just like, <laughs> not like. <sighs> and then this machine. bodice here is, is it 3D printed or is it? This is warbler okay. actually. It's a little easier to get like soft curves. Sure. And warble. I see the needle themes and the yeah, buttons and the on buttons. them. I think I've lost a couple buttons today. <laughs> that would make sense. So many, <laughs> I don't, you can't tell. And then you've got your lace on here as well. Yeah, too. and then there's lace up here too. And then these sleeves. Tell me about this. Does, this is like the most complicated sleeve design I've ever seen. Oh, okay. So this is this is a, a Canadian smocking, which is a, like an heirloom technique. Okay. Like most grandmas know how to do it. They'll do it for like their little christening gowns and stuff. Um, and then, so I smocked all the fabric and then applied it to a sleeve pattern and then um, hand did all the details on it, the beads and the sequins. So I've never heard of smocking. Do you spend time like looking up esoteric sewing techniques? I, yeah, my favorite thing to do is to sit on YouTube and like look up like very, and, and it's always like an older lady and she's like filming it on a potato, <laughs> you know? A lot of times they're like English and she's just like, here's how you do it. You can barely see it because it's like hard dark room. Well, it's making a comeback in the it's community. Kind of, yeah, I've yeah, seen a lot yeah. of people doing it now. A lot of people now. are doing smocking yeah. now. It's fun. It's fun because a lot of cosplayers are looking for like old stuff, yeah. and we're sort of bringing it back into um, popular. No, I'm, I'm I'm making it popular again. No, but. It's fun to look back at what people have been doing. Absolutely. Like, well, I think people want more detail in their costumes. Yeah. yeah. And so they're looking for that. And like, this is a great way to add that kind of thing. Yeah. And so that's why I think we're seeing it more and more. Well, I remember mm -hmm. I was researching um, Aragorn's costume from Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. And in his jacket, he's got this very specific type of attachment that's super elaborate and really complicated yeah. and labor intensive and yeah. the fans who've gone and done it i mean it, there's nothing that looks quite right except right. for except that except if you do it exactly, exactly right. right like um oh the Daenerys dresses mm -hmm. have a ton of smocking in oh really it. Yes. yeah yeah, the yeah dragon that's probably smocking. like the most popular it's a, it's a specific pattern called dragon stills smocking um and the fashion designer the lady who did the costumes actually like put it all on her blog with like the exact pattern that she oh did my and goodness. how she did the like embroidery around the smocking pattern. So people will cheat sometimes, but you can absolutely tell if somebody actually did the smocking and well, it's, it's, it it's looks best. Putting the instructions on like that yeah. is like so nice because that's why you see it so much. Yeah. Right. Because if someone says, well, I love that, but I don't know how to do it, it's really difficult. But like that's, that's a lot of what we really like as well and what like a lot of the people we hang out with do is we trial and error, we fail a whole bunch, and then when we figure out how to do it, here's the instructions so you too can yeah. put it into your cosplay. That's so, amazing. That's okay, fun. Regan, yes. this gigantic construction you are wearing, I can't believe it, you can support it all. It's very balanced. Is it really? It's very, it's very balanced. balanced. You, you, uh, is some of this being supported on your shoulders? No, no, these <gasps> are all just bustles. Oh, wow. So like if you've ever seen a hoop skirt mm -hmm. or like a, a Rococo gown where the, the bustle is more like a pannier out to the side, yeah. same concept. So it's just boning and so it's very, very lightweight. These are actually probably lighter than the helmet. Wow. Okay, so wh wh who is this costume? Uh, so the costume is from Tree of Savior. It's mm -hmm. a Korean MMORPG. Um, and like we, we cosplay lots of different stuff. Like I cosplay characters I love, we'll make up designs for characters we love, but I'll also cosplay just costumes I love. And I saw this design and I said, that one. Uh, that crown <laughs> is truly mind blowing. I mean, the, the, oh yeah, get, up, get on in there. All the you've got in here. I can see appliques, I can see like you a laser cut foam perhaps? Um, so uh, that is like the one tool we don't have. We don't have a laser cutter. Really? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, we've <laughs> yes. got a lot of other stuff. Um, but uh, so this one actually we used a Cricut machine ah. uh, and cut out foam vinyl that I then applied to thermoplastic. It's Beautiful, Thank and you. The, the detail on these horns is also incredible. Thank oh, you. they're super lightweight. They're almost those ones foam. are also foam. Those <gasps> ones are foam. The part of the reason I also picked this outfit is because, like, 
we've been doing it for we've been doing cosplay for like a pretty long time mm -hmm. and one of the things that makes it so fun for us is it's like all learning all the time right like we've been doing it for like almost 20 years but every single costume I see something and I'm like, I want to do that. I want to learn how to do that technique. So I want to learn how to make learn a, a technique yeah. and then you find a costume. Yeah. So yes. You have an excuse no, to this do is it. what I tell people. You've got to find something that you must yes. have that requires that technique. Yeah. So I'll be like, oh, these prosthetics look so cool. I want to learn how to make a prosthetic chest out of silicon. I want to learn how to do 3D printing for the first time. I want to learn how to do resin casting. Yeah. I want to learn how to do foam work. And so, like, this costume in particular, I got to combine a lot, a lot, a lot of those techniques and learn new ones. And like, I think sometimes you see a design that it's like really hard to imagine how that would come into reality because mm -hmm. it just looks so weird. Yeah. And I think combining different techniques um, is part of what can like really help you do that, uh, especially with really weird kind of things like this. But I also love this process when you start to, when you look at something that on first glance, like a picture of this, you'd mm -hmm. be like, I, I have no idea where to even begin. Yeah. And then you start, you make your lists, you start oh, to like break oh, it down into nightmare. parts and pieces. And then there's a certain point at which the costume just enters your head mm -hmm. and like you've got it in there now. And even though you still have to solve all these problems, I, that moment when the whole thing sort of coalesces. You at least know what materials you need. That's yes. like the best starting yes. point. Like this. this Tell me thing about is these crazy. shoulders. Those are well, really amazing. Well, just in terms of having to do a different material to get it to look correct. Right. This one drove me nuts. And by Got nuts, it. I mean I loved it. <laughs> um, because like this shape, I was like, well, I can't make that with my hands. I need to 3D print that. Right. But this thing is clear. I need to resin cast this. <laughs> but these things are kind of very organic. That needs to be thermoplastic. And so <laughs> when you want to get your fingers into all of these different techniques as a cosplayer, like cosplay is anything and can be anything so you can combine all that stuff you're right. not like shoehorned into one little but thing. you end up with that really tricky business of mm -hmm. trying to make the same color on multiple different materials Ooh, which is, so yeah. that's why each material is a different color <laughs> <laughs> can you tell me about your guys early early cosplay like what got you into it in the beginning i got oh, her into it yeah, yeah you were the gateway drug i was the gateway drug <laughs> Well, I was, my gateway drug was, um, I think my first convention was, was 1998. Wow. So I was like 16 and we had to drive eight hours because that was the closest con back then. Um, and me and my friends said, well, we're going to go big or go home. We should cosplay. And like noobs, we picked the hardest cosplay. <laughs> it was a beautiful art book rendition of uh, a character called Umi from Magic Knight Ray Earth, which is an old manga. Mm -hmm. ourselves, yeah. <sighs> I already gave the 1998 yeah. date, so it's fine. <laughs> um, and so we said, let's do that, even though we had no business doing it. None of us knew how to make anything, even though we were kind of artsy. Um, but we made it together. We enlisted the help of a friend of ours who he didn't make costumes or anything, but he knew how to use chicken wire. Yeah. And he had like good <laughs> ideas for using paper mache. Mm -hmm. And my mom had a friend who knew how to sew and we figured out where to buy the wigs from. And to be honest, it's pretty good. You're proud of the work? It You're, looks yeah. pretty darn good, especially for 1998. It's pretty good for a 1998 and, costume. And I think it's because I got everyone to help me, which yeah. is kind of still our shtick, which is like, I love this hobby because of making things, but I also love this hobby because of the community. It takes a village. And then I made my own costume the next year and it looked very yeah, bad. That was not so. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's this funny thing that happens like when you make a first foray into a thing, and you look at it a couple years later and you're mm. like, it's terrible. But then many years later you look and you see, no, it's actually really good. No, no, that's still the case. <laughs> this one just happens to be weirdly good. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Do you have a pic you, you document every costume? I do. Um, I think I have one photo somewhere of that, that one. Was, those, that was a bit that look. Oh, There's yes. So Everything's on cameras. physical. Scone, tell stuff. me about your first cosplay. Oh, God. Uh, so I was always like one of those Halloween was like hardcore Halloween yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. So she was like, well, we're doing this convention in Baltimore, so come and you can wear a costume. And I was like, a costume? I'm sold. I'm going. <laughs> um, so she wanted me to be a character in this other clump manga that hadn't actually shown up in the manga yet so she was like i'll just draw you a picture of what i think it's going to look like <laughs> yeah you see, then, you see the seeds of this okay. nonsense okay. Like. and so it 
I went to Walmart and got dollar yard fabric. Yeah. And then a pattern that was a men's pattern that was for like a 44 inch size man. Oh yeah, large. And I yeah. made it work somehow on my stepmother's sewing machine. And she was just like, at some point walked by and looked at it and then kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was going to be too much to get involved. Um, no wig, no contacts, sneakers. It was 2004. It was fine. You How did it feel to put on the costume? It was great. It was so much fun. It was like, I showed up and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And everybody was like, welcome. And I was like, yay, we can all wear costumes all the time. Is there a moment after you, when you throw a party and you say to everyone show up at eight and like 8.30 and no one's shown up yet, mm -hmm. you're like, maybe no one's no. going to show up. There's a moment after I put on a costume, before I've hit the floor, I'm like, Maybe this is crazy. No. <laughs> and then you hit the floor and people, you get that response. It's always, it's, it's always nice. Yeah, it's always amazing. I just feel very weird going to a convention, not in cosplay, honestly. <laughs> like I, I, I did it once and I was just like, this is weird, never again. And I've never done it ever wow. again. Because <laughs> you, you always... <laughs> I can't even, I mean, Sunday, maybe, maybe. As like a the last day, end of the con kind but of But usually thing. it's a casual thing, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, so we've covered a huge number of parts of this, but I'm curious about this. Yeah. This is also foam work. Yes, so the, so the I, I love details and I love texture. So any mm -hmm. way I can like worm more of that nonsense in there. Yeah. Um, so these are basically hollow foam shapes, mm -hmm. uh, patterned it out with uh, probably newspaper and tape okay. um, to mm -hmm. get the shape that I wanted and then I cut them apart so that I had a foam hollow pattern for Got this. It. This is six pieces. Mm -hmm. um, assembled that and then I dug the the um, lower level in here uh, with a with a hot knife. Okay, yeah. That so that you sense. get some of the grooves. Yeah. And then the upper level, um, this is foam clay actually, which if you have not played with foam clay, I, it is I amazing. Have I have not yet played oh, with it, but I have. Please haven't. go play with it. It is so, so much, much fun. fun. Okay, I, I love it. It's my new favorite. These are also foam clay. Um, oh. oh yeah, yeah, you can squeeze a little, it is That's very fun. hollow. Oh wow, um, super so light. so you get the upper uh, additional texture with that. Uh -huh. And then this is actually uh, duct tape. <laughs> I thought like that looks pretty dark. Oh no, masking tape. I think it's masking. I yeah. thought this looked pretty good, so I slapped it on and painted it. <laughs> totally right. You're totally right. And now, it, like I'm looking at details like this down here with the color variants. <laughs> this, this is all done by you, yes. right? Yes. Yes. So this is um, this is a technique called um, tambour embroidery. Uh, these are all just like different individual beads, and you wow. uh, string them on in a chain stitch. Oh my gosh. And that's how you can get like the nice looking back to it as well, just because this, unfortunately, we knew, we knew right, it was transparent, right. and so that's kind of the advantage. Uh, is this another one of like binging Netflix while you're sitting there slowly? You know, beadwork is weirdly fun. It's very weirdly relaxing. fun. It's kind you of You wouldn't hypnotic. think it. No, no, yes. I look, I'm all about the tedium. I mm. remember once coming upon a room full of old women all doing a lace workshop, like making I lace. I love, I want to learn how to make lace so bad. It was I'm looking so... looking for somebody to teach. If anybody out there wants to teach me how to make lace, it was intoxicating to see a room of 25 old women all like yeah. hand making lace in this. Well, that, well, this is an example. She's going to find an outfit yeah. to put the. Uh, didn't yeah. you already find an outfit to put the lace on? I'm probably going to make lace for Marceline. Yeah. There you you know, go. What kind of workshop do you guys have in the house? So, actually, it's funny. <laughs> when we, we, we bought a house a couple years ago, and the realtor was like, What do you want? You know, you want like, a big kitchen, right? You want a big about kitchen. The kitchen. I don't care about like a, the location that much, but we really need like a big space that's separate from the living space so we can have a craft room. And he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> he was a good sport about it. So we bought our condo because it has a big, bright room that we painted and turned into the craft room. Amazing. <laughs> um, on the back of the crown, I see this lovely compass detail with jewels oh, in each. Yeah, of it the... actually does a thing. <gasps> <gasps> oh my gosh. So this about is, the thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, I can't believe I just stumbled upon this great reveal. I'm glad you did. I would have forgotten. Wow. So you've got a motor driving that? Yes. Um, I, w I was lazy. I really didn't want to uh, put a servo in there, so I just put a, uh, a gear motor. Okay. Uh, I just hooked up to some batteries that are uh, tucked into the Bolero. Um, and it actually has lights as well, but we thought it might interfere with the lighting in here. Yeah, we could turn the lights on. It, yeah, it, it, motor's it, fun. It is gorgeous. How did you build that? Is that also foam? Um, so That's 3D printed. Yeah, I really like to use, I, I love to use the different materials depending on what it looks like. So mm -hmm. like 
organic stuff, I really still want to use my hands and do foam and warbler. Sure. But something very geometric like the arrow, like that is perfect for 3D printing in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so those guys are 3D printed. The gems are actually like a, a clear type of thermoplastic. Mm -hmm. um, and then the gear motor is just kind of attached to the very back. Oh yeah. Oh, so the gems are like a friendly plastic. Yes, yeah. okay. yes, like a clear like friendly a, plastic. Wow, I didn't it's, know they were making a, it in jewel colors. called Warbler. Oh, no, we colored that. Oh. It was yeah, so the Warbler. You Sharpie did it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Warbler I love the low tech. <laughs> I, you know, it there's looks, no shame. I use hot glue all the time. Absolutely. There is no shame in it. No, no, no. When I, when I, I there, there's a costume I finished early, mm -hmm. which all Never, rarely well, happens. Well, I, I, but I finished it like three weeks before the con, and mm -hmm. it was really, it's the alien space. It was super old and mm -hmm. weathered. So I'd come in every morning before work with a cup of coffee, and I'd just like throw a little <laughs> coffee on it and just go to work and it looks like, great. just slowly beat it up. Oh my God. You guys are so inspiring. Thank you. Uh, I love the fact that you also are playing with a gamut from original to mm -hmm. canon uh, with the different materials uh, and you're clearly super obsessed and you feed each other's obsessions. The, yeah, this is yeah. this is a dangerous, a dangerous <laughs> combination. You are playing at such a high level and it is super inspiring. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much yeah. for showing me this. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. I can't wait to see what you do next year. I We already have plans. Yeah. So we'll be back. <laughs>